live from WTVO Rockford and your home team. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. A mom and her teenage daughter are dead after a crash in Rockford earlier this month. The driver who caused the wreck is behind bars. The victim's family says the loss of their loved ones could have been avoided. A Rockford City Council member throws his hat in the race for Congress. Alderman Jonathan Logeman says improvements to the city and the 17th district are only a phone call away. A Stevenson County nursing home could be sold to a health care group. What a change in ownership could mean for residents with no other options for a place to stay. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. A 14-year-old girl and her mom are dead after a crash last week. A five-year-old boy was also in the car. Police say the other driver was under the influence. Rachel Perry spoke with the victim's family. And Rachel, they tell you the five-year-old son was released from the hospital? Mimi and Eric, family tells me the five-year-old is doing better, but Jerisha Goodwin's cousin feels this could have been prevented. Her five-year-old is left without his mother and sister and her oldest son, again, to be left without his mother and his sister. 38-year-old Jerisha Goodwin and her daughter, Alani Henry, were killed in a car crash last week on West State. Juan Arce is charged with reckless homicide. Police say he was under the influence. Rotonda Goodwin tells me Arce destroyed her family. It's been hard, you know, trying to try to explain to the five-year-old really what's going on. He, he recounts some things. Jerisha died at the scene of the crash and Alani was airlifted to the hospital. Rotonda says the family had to make a hard choice on Friday. My family, along with her father and his family, we had decided to go ahead and take her off life support because she hadn't been stable since the night of the accident. In 2019, Arce pled guilty to driving under the influence. Rotonda thinks the mother and daughter's deaths could have been prevented. I don't understand why he's been able to get away with the DUIs that he's had. And then it turns out we have to suffer for his drinking and driving. Now she's trying to pick up the pieces. Looking back at the memories she has with them, like how special this year's homecoming dance was for Jerisha. Her mom never got to do those things with her because she was 11 when her mom passed away. And so she was so proud to be able to um, share that moment with her daughter that day for homecoming. Rotonda says Jerisha's 19-year-old and 5-year-old sons are now living with her. If convicted, Juan Arce faces up to 14 years in prison. Mimi. All right, thanks, Rachel. A Rockford City Council member hopes to represent Illinoisans in Washington, D.C. Jonathan Logeman announced today he'll run for Congress. The Democrat serves as the four city's second ward alderman. Logeman also teaches economics at Auburn High School. He served in Afghanistan and is currently a member of the Illinois Army National Guard. Logeman says his dependable reputation already precedes him in the 17th district. I am a very hard worker and very responsive. Um, one of you know, my core values is if you call me, I'm going to call you back. You know, everybody knows that when they call John Logeman, you're going to get a phone call back and we're going to try to address this issue. If elected, Logeman's goals include improving childhood education and revamping veterans' affairs. Republican candidates Charlie Helmick and Esther Joy King have announced their candidacy for Representative Sherry Bustos' seat. For weeks, goods and supplies have been sitting on cargo ships offshore in California. Stores and factories are waiting. The COVID-19 pandemic's been blamed for the supply chain dilemma. Some people point fingers at the Biden administration. In order to fix those issues, President Joe Biden announced a deal with several companies and labor unions to keep the Port of Los Angeles working around the clock. That's to unload those ships and get the goods delivered around the country. This could be good news for consumers with holiday shopping season coming quickly. This is the first key step toward moving our entire freight transportation and logistical supply chain nationwide to a 24-7 system. The Port of Long Beach started a similar move three weeks ago. LA and Long Beach are the points of entry for 40% of incoming shipping containers to the U.S. Rock Valley College says progress is being made on its Advanced Technology Center in Belvedere. The facility is set to open in January of 2022. The committee working on the ATC says tasks previously delayed by COVID are now back on the to-do list. 
That includes getting plumbing and fire inspections completed, finishing the electric drops for Flex Lab equipment, and installing CNC machining equipment. RVC also says it's staying on budget for the project. Rockford streets are getting a little brighter. Nearly 2,000 city owned lights are being converted to have LED bulbs. It's part of a new ComEd energy efficiency program. 10,000 lights owned by ComEd are also being replaced. The new fixtures will produce more light than the traditional street lights. For the city, it means spending less on energy. The project is set to wrap up by mid November. A state line nursing home could soon see new ownership. A medical company wants to buy Walnut Acres Group in Freeport. Some board members tell Michelle Rave a sale would put local Medicaid users out on the street. She joins us now with more. Michelle. Walnut Acres has been serving the community for over 100 years. It's run by Stevenson County, but now its future could be in jeopardy. This is what we should care the most about, is making sure that people are cared for locally, in our community, where we can have a say and make sure that it's done properly. Jody Koss is a community organizer for the Save Walnut Acres group. She hopes the county continues to run the nursing home, not sell it. If we can't take care of our own people, if we can't provide the care that they need at a time when they are struggling, you know, what are we here for? Earlier this year, the Stevenson County Board put the facility up for sale. On Thursday, they're set to vote on an offer from Saba Healthcare Group for $1.6 million. What a letter of intent means is that uh, will engage in conversation with a particular entity that is looking at purchasing Walnut Acres. It does not mean that a sale will happen. This is just the first step. Board member Casey Anthony believes selling would impact the most vulnerable in the community. Those community members who only have Medicaid as their only source of insurance um, would have to more than likely go to outside of our local area, um, which would be a travesty. Haas says community members need to voice their concerns. The most important thing you can do is you can talk to your county board members. You can call them and tell them the, the facts of, you know, that you want this um, county home saved. Anthony tells me other board members are planning to approve the letter of intent. The $1.6 million offer is considerably less than the $5 million the building went up for sale originally. Tomorrow's board meeting is at 6.30. Eric Mimi. As Hispanic Heritage Month continues, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden's continuing her tour of Chicago. This morning she dropped by Arturo Technical Institute. Biden held a roundtable discussion with Governor J.B. Pritzker and U.S. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona. Megan Dwyer recaps the First Lady's trip. In her last stop in Chicago Wednesday morning. As a community college educator for forever. <laughs> Dr. Jill Biden was in her comfort zone. I just feel right at home and in a college, in a school. First Lady said she wanted to hear directly from students who are most impacted by the administration's policies. I think our administration is, you know, trying to really wrap its arms around all Americans. Today she visited two classrooms. It was really exciting. We have to start small, so they will take small pieces of conduit. An electrical technology apprentice program. Feed a lot of people. And a horticulture class where students learn how to professionally grow food. I wanted to just showcase how important agriculture is and how much it's growing in Chicago. During her brief visit, Dr. Biden specifically asked how City Colleges of Chicago is recruiting female students. Embrace your bilingualism, your biculturalism, because that's your superpower. She had a roundtable discussion with local Latino leaders. I'm a first generation, a Mexican American, a gay man. Facilitated by U.S. Department of Education Secretary Miguel Cardona. We've traveled the country looking at schools, looking at programs. And the bottom line for me, and I think for Miguel too, is jobs. Jobs. And that's what these schools are providing at very little cost. 
That was Megan Dwyer reporting. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, it was a very rainy Wednesday morning, afternoon. The back edge of those rain showers now working across parts of the area, kind of exiting off to the east here this evening. This will leave us with a mostly cloudy sky. With the rain and the cloud cover, temperatures had a hard time making it out of the 50s and the 60s today. In fact, felt very cool out there, but the rain beneficial as we do need the rain. Not necessarily right now as we're trying to get out in the fields, get the harvest done. You're going to have to wait a couple of days, I think, before things start to dry out. But we had a decent amount of rain, anywhere from half an inch up to three quarters of an inch for most come down with some of the heavier thunderstorms. No severe weather, and we don't have to be concerned with any severe weather here as we go through this evening. There is a cold front that comes in, but by the time it comes through, that'll be a little after midnight, so things will be much more quiet. Every day this week has tallied up some sort of a rainfall total, even if it's been just a trace of rain. This has pushed our monthly rainfall total up over three and a half inches, pushing us to 2.38, almost 2.4 inches above where we should be here nearly two weeks into the month of October. It's been quite some time since we've talked about uh, rainfall that has been above average this much this year, as this year has been fairly dry. While the year has been warm. Our temperatures today have been anything but. We're now sitting in the 60s, 63 in Rockford, Janesville, Rochelle, 66 in Sterling. We've had that southeasterly wind. Our wind has been from the southeast as a cold front has been down to our southwest. You can kind of pick out where that cold front sits. In fact, it actually sits just here to our southwest. And as that lifts to the north later this evening, that is going to bring those temperatures up. So our high temperature for today might actually be a achieved after the sun sets. If we look at our numbers here as we get closer to 9, 10 o'clock, notice we'll see that warmth begin to spread. So temperatures could come back near 70 degrees once we get a little further into that evening as the warm front pulls up to our north. But a cold front comes in around midnight and that'll bring our temperatures back down. In fact, starting tomorrow morning, we'll see those numbers start off in the 50s. With the arrival of that warm front and cold front, that is going to bring another chance for a few showers and we can see that here on future cast but you don't have to be concerned with any severe weather with this one because we just don't have the instability and then the timing of everything coming in later this evening. So a little break in some of the rainfall next couple of hours, but I'd say about 8, 9 o'clock we'll start to see some of those showers kind of work, work back in. You might even hear a clap of thunder or two with that. That'll linger as we go through about 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. After that, we'll start to see that front pull a little further to our east. We'll keep the cloud cover around for the first part of the morning tomorrow, but a little dry air coming in tomorrow afternoon will allow some sunshine to poke through during during the afternoon, and that'll stay with us through tomorrow evening, so that'll bring our temperature back up near 70. Cloud cover, though, does come back in for Friday morning. It will bring a chance for rain Friday afternoon, early Friday evening, before a second cold front comes down on Saturday, and this will bring our temperatures down, too. So for those Friday night football games, you might have to watch uh, the radar. Could have a couple of showers early on. Uh, very gloomy, a live look with our Mercy Isle Sky Track camera now out over the Park Hills Golf Course in Freeport. Temperatures tomorrow morning near 57, but we'll be warming here this evening. Tomorrow we'll make it up near 70 degrees for the afternoon with some sunshine for the afternoon. Temperatures, guys, will take a little drop here as we head towards the weekend. 62 degrees, kind of cool there on Friday, especially with the cloud cover. Lower 60s for Saturday. I would not be surprised if some areas Sunday morning wake up to temperatures in the 30s, but you see we're right back into the 70s by early next week. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with Sports Director Scott Lever. Oh, the White Sox had a great season, but not good enough. Not good enough, excuse me. Not when the goal was to win a World Series championship. So how do the Sox enhance their chances for next year? As talented as this young lineup is, this roster does need work. And the American League will provide more stiff competition next year. The Astros aren't going anywhere. The Blue Jays and Rays are loaded with young talent. The Yankees and Red Sox will spend money and do what they need to do to improve. So the Sox need to do the same. The Sox could use an all-around right fielder, more help in the bullpen, a better manager, but Tony La Russa will be back. The biggest need I see for the Sox is starting pitching. This rotation lacks a dominant number one guy. I know Lance Lynn and Carlos Rodon had great regular seasons. I don't expect Lynn to be quite as good next year. And Rodon's a free agent who can't be relied on to stay healthy. 
The Sox might explore resigning Rodon at a cheap price, maybe do a two-year contract. But Rodon will probably want more, so I'd pass on that, considering again his history of arm and shoulder injuries. If Rodon leaves in free agency, the Sox starting rotation will most likely look like this. Lance Lynn, Lucas, Lucas Giolito, Dylan Cease, Dallas Keuchel, and Michael Kopech. It is time to make Kopech a starter again and see if they can unlock his potential. The Sox are stuck with Keuchel's big contract for two more years. Giolito is hot and cold. Lynn will be solid, but again, there is no big-time number one ace. Maybe the Sox would be willing to part with some of their young talent and trade for a potential ace. Gavin Sheets, Andrew Vaughn, how about trading Aloy Jimenez? Max Scherzer fits the bill of an ace. He's a free agent. Chances are the Dodgers will re-sign him. Clayton Kershaw is also a free agent. His best years are behind him, so he's not the big-time ace anymore, but he's still good. Justin Verlander in 2019 won 21 games, but he's hardly pitched the last two years because of injuries, and he's 39, so he's not the answer. Noah Syndergaard's a big name, but like Rodon, he can't stay healthy. Kevin Gosman, he's intriguing. He was 14-6 and six with the Blue Jays this season. There are no easy answers for the White Sox, but they cannot hold back. The championship window is right now. That's my take. We'll be right back. Candace, we'll have a final look at the weather in just a moment. First, here's what News Nation has planned later. Tonight, the reason a California shoplifting law may actually end up hurting the very people it's intended to help. Plus, we'll tell you why Democrats view Virginia's gubernatorial election as the canary in the coal mine. That's on balance. Now we'll look at tonight's Dan Abrams Live. Thanks, Leland. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live. One on one with Megyn Kelly, she joins me live to take on the president's vaccine mandate and kids in the vaccine. We agree on some things, disagree on others. That's coming up tonight on Dan Abrams Live. You can catch News Nation on cable and satellite stations you see here. NewsNation.com is also an option. First warn, interactive radar there on mystateline.com shows the showers moving out here this evening. We'll keep the cloud cover around a little more dry time the next couple of hours, but showers expected to come back in. Could even see an isolated thunderstorm here about 8, 9 o'clock. Those will continue through midnight. Cold front comes through. Temperatures in the 50s tonight up near 70 tomorrow. A few showers on Friday drying out for the weekend. Thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending some of your time with us. Stay safe.